So in today's video, I'm going to tell you why I am not using Short Pixel on my new premium age website case study, Gardenia Organic. And I'm going to show you how I'm using a free tool to optimize all my images. So let's get into this. Hi and welcome back to the channel again. Yeah, so today's video, I'm gonna tell you why I am not using Short Pixel anymore and why I'm just using Canva, the free account to optimize my images and how you can do the same. So first of all, why am I not using Short Pixel? Because I've used it before and I recommend it. In fact, I still do recommend it for certain functions. So firstly, the three reasons I am not using Canva. So I'm not using Canva because number one, it is a plugin. And at the end of the day, I'm trying to keep the plugins on this new website down to a minimum of six. And secondly, I'm not using it because I want to have no subscriptions. So I don't want to pay for credits to optimize my images. And number three, there is always going to be a security risk with the more plugins you have on your website. One of the number one factors for websites getting hacked is through third party plugins. So I'm keeping the plugins on my website down to as minimum as possible, therefore reducing the risk of that website getting hacked. So when would I still use Short Pixel? Well, I'd use Short Pixel on any website that I purchase that is unoptimized or performing badly, or on a website that maybe I've built myself in the past that I have done a rookie error and I've not optimized the images or the performance is quite poor. So I would use a tool like Short Pixel in that scenario because I can't go through hundreds of posts or thousands of images, take each one off and optimize it and put it back on the site. That's the time when I would use something like Short Pixel, install the plugin, click optimize, and it will go through the entire website and it bulk optimizes all your images within a, a few minutes. So that's when a tool like Short Pixel is really handy. But for this website, I want to build it, what I'm gonna say the right way, I'm gonna build it from the ground up, totally optimized manually using as many free processes and as many simplified processes as possible. I'm using the basic editor on the website, we're optimizing the images manually, and then we're just formatting the images and we're hitting publish. We're keeping things as simple as possible. In fact, it's something that I've really done. I've kind of reeled myself back from all the flashy gadgets and tools and plugins. I just want simplicity. We've got a simple theme, we've got some good hosting on there, and we're gonna optimize on page and off page all our blog posts manually, and then click upload. So what tool am I using? So I'm using Canva. I'm using a very, very simple process to do that. And in fact, I'll tell you exactly how I do it right now. So the image you can see behind me is an image that I've taken myself. I've been using my phone a lot, going around garden centers, parks, woodlands, and taking as many images as I can for this website. I'm trying to make all the images as unique as possible and very relatable to the actual blog post by taking them myself. Now, when you take an image on your phone, it looks incredible, but the file size is very big. In fact, you can see on the screen now, the file size for this image is 4,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels, which is huge. And it's a file size of 4.6 megabyte, which again is absolutely huge. It would only take a handful of images like that on a website before you see some performance in speed. So we need to optimize this image. So all I'm gonna do is simply head over to Canva. Like I said, it's a free account. I am not here to sell you an account for Canva. It is a free account. I do have the pro plan, but it's only because I want the extra features and the videos and the infographics and all the actual other functionalities Canva can give you on the pro plan. But to optimize these images, you do not need that. You just need a basic free account. So the first thing I do is go to the size, custom size, and I set my images to 1200 by 800. That is a good size image to have on a blog post because it is a recommended image that Google uses. So if you ever have any articles that are featured on things like Google Discovery, you might get your images used if it's that file size. It tends to be the most popular size that Google looks for. So I set it to 1200 by 800, simply click the upload button, find the image that you want, the file that you want, upload it into Canva, and then simply drag and drop that image onto the template that you've just created, that 1200 by 800 space. 
Once you've done that, you simply need to download and click JPEG. That is the most commonly used format. There are some new formats out there that are even smaller file size, but in Canva at the moment, I'm still using JPEG. And then this is the critical part. You can see the slider here. Now this slider controls the quality of the image and the higher up the slider, the better quality the image is, but also the larger the file size. So I typically drag that slider down to anywhere between 20 and 30 on the slider scale. And you can see that will reduce the actual quality of the image, but it's hardly noticeable. And if we then download that, you can see if I open the file size, you can see that we have now gone from 4.6 megabytes, now down to 1200 by 800 in size, and just over 100 kilobytes. That is a perfect size and a nice small file size that is not gonna slow your website down in, at all. You can have hundreds of images that file size and you're gonna see hardly any decrease in site performance. And in fact, if you wanna see the performance of this site, let me tell you now, it's got over 150 articles on there. It's probably got 400 images on there. And you can see on the screenshot now, this is from Page Speed Insight you can see the speed and the performance of my website. It's pretty good, right? Now, there are other factors apart from images that will slow your website down. Number one, really poor hosting is gonna have a detrimental effect to your speed and also a really bad theme. So I'm using hosting from Spiderweb, so spiderweb.net. It's very cheap hosting, it's about eight or nine dollars per month but it's superb quality hosting and i'm using the popcorn theme which is my own wordpress theme you can find links down in the description to the hosting and the theme they are affiliate links i would make a commission if you use them so thank you very much but yeah i'm using good hosting a really good quality theme and then just optimizing my images for every single blog post if you do those three things you are keeping the website simple effective, what I call clean. It's gonna run lovely, it's gonna look great, and you will see no difference in the quality of the image. In fact, I'll put a screenshot up now. There are two images on here, the same image. Tell me now, which one do you think is the original one? Is it the one at the top, or is it the one at the bottom? Have a guess, I'll give you a few seconds. Well, actually, the image at the bottom is the original image. And I think you will agree, the, it's hardly even noticeable. It's only really for very expert photography and publications where they may see a slight difference. On a blog post, nobody is gonna tell the difference. And that was optimized on Canva for free using their free account. So I hope you like that. It's just answering a few people have been saying, how am I optimizing my images? Where am I getting it from? So that's how I'm doing it. It's a simple process doesn't cost me out, there's no risk or security to my website by adding plugins. I'm just keeping it on page, very, very simple. So thanks for joining me, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please subscribe, and then I will see you in the next one.